Hi there, Joel from Jonesies, and we still have our Cummins uh, 6BT on the bench up here, and we're going to do some uh, preventative maintenance. Uh, we already replaced the uh, rear crank seal, and now we are going to uh, tackle the killer dowel pin, KD, uh, whatever you want to call it. So uh, here it is. Uh, you got to take off the uh, balancer and this cover, and then uh, you'll have access to the uh, killer dowel pin. So I'm going to go ahead and blast this uh, balancer off and then take out all these bolts and um, we'll uh, uncover the uh, dowel pin that is the culprit. So here we go. So here is the culprit. We've got the uh, tiny cover all the way off. It's in the parts washer getting cleaned and that right there is the killer dowel pin that uh, can vibrate and migrate out. So, um, what do you do for a repair kit? So we uh, got ours from BD Diesel. Um, a lot of people are gonna say, oh, well, you don't really need to order a whole expensive kit from BD Diesel because all you technically need is this component right there. Um, that will go over that bolt and hold the killer dowel pin um, in place. But the nice thing about buying a kit, especially if you're a DIYer and you've never done this before, is that they give you instructions and everybody has to pay for tuition. So um, they assemble the whole entire kit. It gives you everything that you need. The uh, front seal, the new gasket around for the timing cover, as well as the little tab, and also a replacement dowel pin if yours somehow fell out. Um, if yours fell out and it's floating around in there somewhere, I would advise you to find it and pull it out so that it doesn't grenade your engine. Okay, so um, next step is going to be to get everything cleaned up and press the uh, front crank seal into the front timing cover with the supplied tool. So we'll head over there and do that next. Here we are with the front cover. It's uh, gone through the parts washer and in the uh, kit that we're using, that comes with a new seal. It's got the plastic uh, guard on it that helps installation easier. It also comes with the installation tool. Um, again, some of the advantages of buying a kit instead of making your own. So like, if you want to make your own, knock yourself out, but then you're going to have to come up with all these little different pieces and then your cost savings goes down drastically. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use a little bit of black RTV sealer on the outside of the seal only. Again, uh, if you look at the seal, it says to install it dry. And what they're referring to is the actual lip on the seal, not the outside. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sealer around the outside. And what that will do is that will help lubricate this as it goes in, and then also compensate for any issues or any discrepancies in the surface um, on your front cover. So I've got the front cover sitting up here on the mill so that it's got a nice uh, flat spot to put it in. Um, and then take note of any of the um, instructions on the front of the seal. It shows the direction of the crank and then how it is supposed to go in. So set that guy in there like that. Then using your installation tool, you can set that there like that. Get some of this stuff out of my way here. And then we can tap the new seal into position. Try to get it started evenly if you can. Um, this can sometimes be easier said than done, as you can see. Okay, so there, it's, it's going in a little on the crooked side, and one side's already in too far, so what we need to do is one side started, the other side is not. So we need to flip it over like that, and tap, tap the seal back, and you get a little punch.
Again, this is why you use the installation tool and the RTV. Okay, so now set the installation tool in there and it looks like we should be able to get this to go in evenly. So now tap your high side and look around and see if the seal itself or the installation tool is even all the way around and it is not. Okay, so you want to gently tap this so that that installation tool installs the seal evenly all the way around. Okay, so then you take that out and you can look inside there and it sets the actual seal in a little bit deeper than the original. This gives it a virgin surface on the front of the crank to provide a nice seal. So then if you still have some RTV you can take your finger and smear that RTV around the outside and then you can see the back side also. There's the RTV that you can then smooth out with your finger for a nice seal around the <coughs> timing cover. Okay, now this guy is ready to be installed. So we're gonna set this guy here. In the kit, they also include one of these. This is a dust shield. It does not work for our applications. The crankshaft on ours is too small for that. It might work on yours. Okay, so then in order to hold this gasket in place when we're getting ready, we'll just daub a little bit of that black RTV around the outside of the seal so that it will um, stay with the timing cover itself. Okay, so next step, we got our seal installed. We're gonna head back over to the engine and we're gonna actually install the little mounting tab for the killer dowel pin. Okay, so we're gonna take out this bolt right here because that's what actually holds the little tab down. So once you get it out, you're gonna to wanna to spray it with some brake cleaner. I've got some brake cleaner here somewhere. Right there. Got some brake cleaner. You wanna make sure you clean those threads out inside there, um, and then blow that out with some compressed air. Now, for this guy right here, uh, you can see the bolt. The tab slips right over the bolt, and then we're going to secure the bolt in place with some red Loctite. And check all of your instructions and your manuals um, and other resources for torque specs. I don't want people asking me about torque specs. That's for you guys to deal with, not me. So anyway, I'm going to bolt it back in, and we'll torque it down to spec. So here we go. Let's put the... Put some red Loctite on the bolt. Doesn't take a whole lot. So Loctite's pretty cool stuff because it is anaerobic, which means that it hardens and cures in the absence of air, whereas the RTV sealer that we were using was aerobic meaning it cures with access to air. So um, that Loctite won't harden up until it actually gets installed and seats against those threads. Um, <clears throat> and then it will start to cure because there won't be any oxygen. Whereas when we put the front timing cover on, we're going to, it's gonna have access to air. So what you're gonna to wanna to do for the front timing cover is use your RTV, get it all bolted back together, and then let it sit before you put any oil back in or you run the engine so that that RTV can um, have time to cure. So that's the same with the threads. We're gonna put thread sealer on these bolt holes, these mounting holes, and you wanna tighten those up 
and then let it sit and then retorque them um, so that you can give the time for the RTV to actually cure around the threads and then not leak. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got our, our tab is, is installed under the bolt, it's torqued down. Now I just need to take a hammer and a punch and bend that piece over. So let me grab that. go. That dowel pin will not fall out and get chewed up amongst your gears. Action. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit of the black RTV and I'm going to put a thin layer all the way around this whole surface. Don't go getting crazy with the gun here and spreading it all over everything so that it spooges out all over everything because then what will happen is just chunks of this stuff will just come off and then float around inside your engine and the next guy that has to take this off is going to hate you if you do that that's why you should always use a gasket so this makes for a really boring video watching me do this so what we're going to do is I'm going to put up thin layer all the way around here. I'm going to repeat that same process on the timing cover, put the gasket in between, and then coat the bolts, threads, just a little bit like this. Like that. And then put all the bolts in and cinch them down and torque them to spec. And then after that, it's just a matter of putting all the rest of your accessory drives on and then um, letting it wait, letting the stuff cure, and then starting it up. So anyway, this video is pretty much finished at this point. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel.